everyone. Welcome to Pop Cult X, your pop culture show from a Gen X point of view. Uh, my name is Danny, and along with Gabriel, we're your host um, with the most, I guess. <laughs> and for this week's episode 121, we're going to talk a few things that are in the pop culture world for you guys. So, uh, Gabe, first off, how are you doing? How was your week? Uh, it was good. Uh, doing well. Um, was able to go see uh, a couple movies, um, read some new books. So, uh, yeah, it was a good week for me. How about you? It was good. It was good as well. Saw a movie, some TV shows, some comic books that I picked up. Um, yeah, overall, pretty good. Pretty good. So let's just get started. What what movies did you see this week? Um, I went to go see uh, Gran Turismo. So okay. that was really good. Yeah, I, I'm not a big video game um, person, um, like we've discussed on here before many times. Like, <laughs> I'm not a really big video game. Uh, I guess Gran Turismo is not considered a video game. It's it's considered a simulation. Um, <laughs> where it's that's uh, true. Yeah, simulating the the race. Uh, you know the uh, what were the, those we called the race tracks um, of various race tracks around the world. Um, but Gran Turismo basically is is the whole plot is about how Gran Turismo uh, creates this academy based off of these virtual players who they want to turn into real life race car drivers. Oh, cool. And, um, you know, the absurdity of that initially of, you know, oh, there's just a bunch of kids playing video, you know, quote a video game. How are they going to be, be able to join this sport? focuses on on one kid in particular named Jan, who uh, sort of has the most potential and um that's where the story is it kind of follows along with his journey um it was really good it was really action-packed uh really heartfelt um they have uh they depict the relationship between uh the kid and his families particularly with his father and the expectations that his dad has on him on what he's going to do with his life. He wants him to be successful and he doesn't think that gaming is the way for him to do it. Um, the kid, Jan, wants to become a race car driver, thinks that Gran Turismo is the way to do it. And uh, lo and behold, it is. It is his entryway into that that realm. And so um, you see him kind of on his first uh, competitions and uh, a lot of adventure happens, a lot of drama, um, but it's a really good movie. And it it's sort of, I think, the the revenge of the gamer because it justifies what, you know, all the hours of of playing that or of, of simulating <laughs> play that, that people have have had with that particular game and mm -hmm. prove that with that and a, a little bit of extra training, they were able to become a professional athlete and um, really entertaining movie. It was really good. Yeah, I, I I I like that you call them athletes. I mean, do we call race car driver athletes? I I guess. Yeah, they're considered athletes, just like I mean any other sport. Um, and in that that movie answers to that because I think people think, oh, you just get in a driver's seat and you drive around, but it takes a lot of conditioning, I guess. Yeah, um, and you have to be able to withstand high speeds. Um, uh, you know, really quick reflexes, mm -hmm. uh, the the mental capacity of it. So, um, and that's just like off the top of my head, you know, of of the requirements that it has um to be <laughs> a race car driver. But but yeah, I definitely would consider them athletes. Right on, right on. I mean, I played Gran Turismo a lot. I mean, oh, a cool. lot as a kid, or not a kid, just a younger version of myself. Um yeah. on the PlayStation, then PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3 four and now five um i haven't played the one on the version the latest version for five yet but it's it's a really fun game or simulation it's it really oh. is uh realistic especially with i remember back in the day you got to choose the car you know got to soup up the car that you wanted you know and it was really fun i really enjoyed it so it's really cool especially when i saw the trailer for that movie i was like wow how did they turn this the game into a movie because i i mean we spoke about Twisted Metal, which was another yeah. game that did turn into a TV series. So, and the way you speak about it is that it seems like they didn't shy away from the fact that it it's the game, and they're using that game as a a way to um, weed out, I guess, top tier drivers. So they transitioned yeah. from the game to the real life. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, it helps that this movie is based on a true story. I forgot yeah. to mention that. So, uh, so it's not just an adaption of the game. It's how real life, you know, mm -hmm. how real life, uh, the people behind the video game or the video simulation in real life really did create a race car driver out of a fan of their game That's or cool. simulation. And, um, so that it's really interesting because it 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 is kind of a far and outlandish kind of idea to think that <laughs> you know, someone who is really good at a particular video game would be able to translate that into real life race car driver. I mean, it is is pretty remarkable, but um, it's pretty pretty good movie. It's really enjoyable. I I, I recommend it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a different sort of skill set. I would imagine, right? I mean. Yeah. Going from a video game or simulation, whatever you want to call it, to real world practicality or practice of that. It's I mean, you always think, yeah, oh, yeah, I could drive a race car because I was really good, you know, on in the video games. But, you know, it it really is an additional edge that you need to be able to go at those high speeds. Yeah, yeah, for I, sure. I mean, I think to like other movies that does similar things that like the last Starfighter, right? Mm -hmm where the guy they get they use the arcade game to find the star fighter there's a book called armada by um oh, what's his name the guy who wrote um ready player one and it does something similar where they take video games and they're like prepping the kids for like this impending alien invasion and yeah. they use the video games to simulate what the aliens will how they will move and stuff like that so it's really interesting but for race cars that's Completely different beast, I think. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, really, really cool. cool. Uh, what movie did uh, did you watch? <laughs> I watched a fun popcorn movie, as you like to call it. I watched um, Meg 2, The Trench with uh, Jason Statham. Yeah. And it's, it's it was it was fun. You know, it's not something that you're going to like um, write essays about or, you know, have deep discussions about the intricacies of the Mariana Trench and and the science behind it. Although I'm sure there is some actual science behind it, but it is just a fun action packed movie. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I've been wanting to see it just cause it's what I would consider like a popcorn movie. Like mm -hmm. some, you just go to kind of see ridiculous exactly. facts, ridiculous action, uh, have some comedy thrown in and, and, you know, enjoy some popcorn while you watch it. So um, I've been looking forward to it. Um, yeah. I definitely want to watch it and check it out. I am have, you know, like I think most people a fear of sharks. So you get an advanced enormous <laughs> shark and that really heightens uh, you know, the the drama. So um I would will definitely be checking it out, even though, like you said, it's not gonna be nominated for any me any Academy or or you know, Golden Globes anytime soon. But but it's um, fun. I, it's it's fun. still a fun movie, yeah. Yeah. If, if MTV movie awards, I don't know if they're still around. Um I could see them being nominated for something like that. People's choice for best shark in a villain role or yeah. in a hero role, de role, depending upon how you want to look at it. Um, but yeah, it's fun. Go watch it. You'll enjoy it. Yeah. I'll have to check it out. Uh, I, what else did you get up to? Oh, I watched a, a series on HBO uh, season two of uh, winning time. The rise of the Laker dynasty is out now. And of course it written by a, Rodney Barnes, who we've had on the show, he's one of the writers on there. And it's it's a great continuation of the story. I'm not sure if you wa watched season one or not. I have not. Okay. <laughs> well, it <laughs> continues the the story and it's really well made. I mean, they, they replicate some of the shots are like made it look like um, early 80s footage and whatnot. So it's really cool. Um, actually, not, also in that... Um, another guest we've had on the show, PJ Marino, has an acting role in episode two. So it's pretty oh, cool wow. that, yeah, that he was in that. So I was watching, I was like, hey, I recognize that guy. And sure enough, yeah, so I thought that was really cool. But it's it's really fun. Uh, I enjoy the way they, like, they presented Larry Bird as, like, um, the style they used to sh tell his story was, like, um, almost like a Western so it's really yeah. cool, the different styles that they're mixing in. So I, I recommend that if you have HBO to go watch season one first and then watch season two. The first three episodes are out now. That is cool. And I also picked up, of course, some comic books. Um, you know, sometimes you go 
to the comic book shop and you're just browsing around, then a cover really catches your eye. Yeah. So I I was browsing around. I picked up this Moon Knight City of the Dead, and this cover just really just popped out to me. The way they use of um white for the for Moon Knight himself, it was just really cool. So it's for episode uh, episode uh, issue two, the variant cover for that. Who's the uh, artist that, that did it? Um, <laughs> good question. I think it's Bill Sternak. Sternak. I don't know something. Bill. Or is Bill something or Bill who? Bill Sinkovich? Yes, I think that's who it is. That name sounds familiar. Yes, Bill Sinkowitz. Yeah. Right, yeah. And yeah. I just dropped I, it. Okay. Nice. I, th- I thought I recognized his style of artwork. He's he's a, I'm a really big fan of his work from um the new mutants back in the like oh, okay. the day. Yeah. I also picked up um a cool variant cover for Superboy, The Man of Tomorrow. This just came out today when we're recording it. And it's by our friend Adrian Gutierrez. Oh, nice. And of course, I saw that and I was like, I recognize that style from, you know, Adrian Gutierrez and his Blue Beetle graduation day run. And I so I had to pick it up because I was a big fan of his work. And especially because, as you guys know, this coming Sunday, and if you're watching this down the road, just look for the live uh, version that comes out after this. We're having a special presentation where we will be um, welcoming the creative team of the upcoming DC Blue Beetle special or Blue Beetle ongoing series. So we're going to have Josh Trujillo, Adrian Gutierrez, and Will Quintana on the show for a special live meet and greet, if you will. So I'm really looking forward to that. And hopefully everyone out there, if you're watching this before, September 3rd will join us live so you can come and you can ask questions in the chat and ask if there's anything on your mind about Blue Beetle or, you know, anything you want to say, feel free, join us. Nice. Yeah, that's definitely something to be looking forward to uh, in this upcoming week. Um, the, the one thing that I picked up that I'm um, going to be reading is it's only uh, Teenage Wasteland. Um, and this was uh, the trade paperback and the art is by Jacoby Salcedo, who we just had on uh, yeah. Pop Comics X not too long ago. So um, definitely I'm checking that out. It's uh, basically, I, I guess, about um, uh, the first days of the apocalypse in a group of high school uh, kids and mm-hmm. how they react to that. So I thought that that sounded pretty cool. And the artwork is is uh, pretty amazing. So I definitely check it out. I think it just actually just got released today. Yeah. Um, so I just got that in the mail. I have that on order from Jake from Jacoby. Yeah. So he's going to be sending me one. <laughs> oh, nice. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Do they have the QR codes in there? He mentioned something about the playlist or something like that. Oh, yeah. I, I uh, yeah, it does. That's really cool. I'm looking forward to hearing that, to hearing what kind of music inspired, you know, the, not only the art, but what comes into play it, with, throughout the issue. So that's going to be some fun stuff. Um, what else happened this week that anything in the pop culture trending topics, anything stood out to you? Um, what happened outside of the whole Trump debacle? Um, I'm trying to think of anything <laughs> within pop culture that has really been kind of in the forefront. Um, I can't really say that. Like, I think I've kind of just had my head down watching movies um, and uh, reading and trying to ignore the news uh, but nothing in the entertainment industry that that i have um there is the, the passing of the voice and and you know inspiration mm-hmm. to harley quinn um mm-hmm. that that was kind of sad news that recently came about um a really interesting story about how harley quinn came about um for those that that don't know that it was uh, arlene sorkin who yeah. uh, had created uh this character on on a soap opera and when um, her friend was, you know, designing characters for Batman animated uh, uh, series, um, she showed him a clip of her and he was inspired by that and created the character Harley Quinn and wanted her to be the voice. And mm-hmm. obviously that's one of the most popular characters that has come out of, of the Batman franchise and has been turned into, you know, a movie character and all of that comic character on its own. So um, that was kind of sad to see her uh, to see her pass, but definitely an iconic character within the the world of comic books and uh, comic animation. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, that is sad. 
Especially, like you said, she is one of the most popular characters now in the yeah. DC universe, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Uh, anything that has had your attention? Um, no, not really anything in the trending, I guess you would call it. But I did forget to mention that I did watch the new um, Ahsoka Star Wars series on Disney+. Plus. Oh, yeah. How was that? I, I enjoyed it. It's truly a Star Wars um, show. Of course, with Rosario Dawson playing Ahsoka. And there are characters in there who I've never heard of. I guess they come from the Rebels animated series for Star Wars. But okay. it's it's been pretty fun. There are some shots in there. And I think I, I mentioned this on one of the social medias that it looks really, that they're just amazing cinematically how they're done. So it looks, one of the shots looks like it's a spaceship that's turned on its side and it looks like it's going off into the sunset sailing away it looks really cool yeah so i mean for those of us that aren't big star wars fans it can be kind of intimidating when a new show comes out thinking you know oh i don't know a lot about the star wars universe or galaxy or whatever it is um and so then we don't watch it because there's so many characters so much <laughs> backstory can you watch that show without being a fan or knowing anything about the star wars franchise well i mean <sighs> I guess it did help that I know of um, Star Wars. I'm a fan of it. But yeah. if I didn't know, I think you can. I think you could jump into this. It, they explain it pretty well of what's going on. Now, this series takes place after, I believe, after the original trilogy end. Somewhere in there. I'm not sure the exact <laughs> time frame. <laughs> or actually, I think it takes place between the prequel tri trilogy and the original trilogy somewhere in that time frame see i'm a fan and i get confused too so yeah it's um, really confusing yeah it can be confusing i guess it just enjoy it and not try not to think about the bigger picture and yeah. just enjoy what's in front of you on the screen that's yeah. what i'm trying to do myself because there are so many different characters and so many different like you said the backstories if you don't know it you can just um intimidate yourself so just enjoy what's out there in front of you and yeah. it's really cool. There's, I heard someone told me that during the show is the first time there's ever been a um, lightsaber duel between two female characters. Cool. So that, I was like, wow, really? I guess, I guess so. And so that's pretty cool. Nice. That that is cool. So yeah, it's really fun. I mean, go watch it if you have Disney Plus. Why not? It's it's on there. Enjoy it. Maybe it'll thrust you into wanting to learn more about the star wars universe i don't think that i have the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i understand there's, there's a lot so to... much i mean it's really intimidating because there's so much that you're having to dive into and i mean there's the comic books the video games the animated series the movies mm -hmm. the books it's just it's a lot yeah it, there is a lot and i know another video game i really want to play comes out I think on the 6th of September, it's called Baldur's Gate 3. It's a Dungeons and Dragons game. And it's really, really interesting. So I'm looking forward to that. So there goes more of my time. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I just won't sleep. That's all. Yeah. Who needs sleep? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> well, I think that's all I have for this week. Uh, unless you have anything else you would like to add. Yeah, no, just everyone go, come and check out our conversation uh, on the third Blue Beetle forum. Uh, got all the, the artists uh, and team behind uh, the blue new Blue Beetle series. So definitely come check it out. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, look forward to seeing everyone there and we will catch you soon live. See you then. Bye, everyone. <laughs>